the English Black Prince had raided the French countryside without mercy. And now, his army had come for the capital. With the English on their doorstep, it fell to the French army and the people of Paris to defend the walls of their proud city. Hoping to avoid open battle, the French began fortifying the city, manning the walls and calling every available soldier to his post. As the French hastened their preparations, Several detachments of English soldiers were spotted closing in on the city. The English showed no mercy, burning their way to Paris via three routes, each of which was home to villages and farms that supplied the capital. Fait. 
As the French continued to rally their army, the English took the last of the surrounding villages and had almost encircled Paris. With the countryside in flames and the English at the city gates, the French army steeled themselves for battle. Now came the capital's true test. With the mighty walls of Paris hold against a fearsome English siege. The Parisian guard raised the alarm as the English began their first assault on the city walls. The French army fought valiantly, repelling the first English attack. Let's go! 
The French defense of their capital held firm, wearing down the English invaders one by one. Bastille. 
Besoin à faire the walls of Paris had been breached, the French could still hold the city, so long as its mighty landmarks did not fall.
Les commandements de viande de Guerpitz, Archer, Boyet, Veitchi, commande Veitchi, The enemy grew ever more desperate as their ranks thinned and their hopes of victory faded. Donc besoin de vivre et 
Defeated and demoralized by the strength of the French defense, the Black Prince's army abandoned their siege of the capital. Paris celebrated victory, but this was not the last test the French would face in their struggle to win the war. The battlefields of the Hundred Years' War were full of danger. To defend against these weapons, a new type of armor was developed. Plate armor. Plate armor clad the knight in an articulating exoskeleton of hardened steel. A hard outer shell that still flexes and moves with the body. It provided impressive protection and was an extraordinary technological achievement. Now, one of the ways that armor gets its strength is through shape. Both of these pieces are made out of the exact same thickness as steel, but I can show you there's one stronger than the other. Here's the one with no shape. You see, it buckles immediately. If I swap it for one that's been forged to have strength and shape, you can see it's much stronger. It's going nowhere. It wasn't just the shape that gave it strength. It was also how the metal was treated by the armorer. Now, the benefits of using heat is that obviously makes the piece more plastic, more ductile, lets me shape it. But the fuel also adds layers of carbon into the outer surface. This helps me increase the hardness and strength of the material. The art of the armorer was being able to judge the temperature of the metal by eye, managing the heat to create resilience in the metal. The combination of heat-treated metal and rigid shapes meant that armor didn't need to be so thick and heavy, making it much easier to fight in. But good quality plate armor did have its downside. It was very expensive. 
Now, not everyone could afford full steel plate armor. For the common man, there is a brigandine. Now, these are made up of overlapping steel plates that are then riveted through a textile outer. This gives you a much bigger range of movement, but is limited and is not as strong as a full steel breastplate. That said, it is much cheaper and much easier to maintain. At its best, the armored knight was invincible. But armor didn't just provide defense. It was also a weapon and an expression of a knight's power and prestige. Armor transformed its wearer into a work of art.